Hi there, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to create a 3D carousel effect using Fusion 3D tools in DaVinci Resolve. As always, you can download the free template and use it directly in the edit page. Towards the end of the video, I have a quick demo of creating a carousel slideshow using the template. If you want to learn more about Fusion tools, you can also follow the tutorial and create the effect from scratch in the Fusion page. There are six image clips in the timeline stacked on top of each other. We will use them to create a carousel effect, rotating through the images. I use still images for the demo, video clips also work. Select all images, right-click and create a Fusion clip. Open it in the Fusion page. All images are merged together through merge nodes and marked as different layers, as we see in the inspector. Since we are building a 3D scene, these merge nodes are no longer required. Delete all the merge nodes. Add six image plane 3D nodes to the editor. Link the six media in nodes to the corresponding image plane nodes. From the toolbar, add a merge 3D node and render a 3D nodes to the editor. Connect the renderer node to the media out. Link all image plane nodes to the merge 3D node. We now have a 3D scene set up. Drag the merge 3D node to the left viewer, so we can see those images in a 3D world. Because all image planes are initially set to the same position, in the 3D viewer, we can see only one image at the moment. For these six images, we will make a carousel with six sides. This means each side will be positioned 60 degrees apart from one another. We'll leave the first image at its current place, there is no need to change. Select the second image plane. Go to the Transform tab in the inspector. Rotate the image by 60 degrees along the Y axis. Set the Z pivot to minus 1. This adjustment shifts the rotation point of the image backward by one unit. As a result, the image will rotate in a circular motion. You can treat this value as the radius of a carousel. Check the result in the viewer as you adjust the pivot value. This looks good. Select the third image plane node. In the Transform tab, change the Y rotation to 120. Modify the Z pivot with a simple expression. We will link it to the Z pivot of the previous image plane 3D node. Control click the previous image plane node so that both nodes are available in the inspector. Instead of typing the expression, we can click the add button and drag a whip towards the other node. Wait a bit until it opens the parameters. Continue dragging to the Z pivot parameter. Release the button. The simple expression is now correctly set and linked. As you see, the parameter name is pretty long and complex, so it's easier to use a pick whip in this case. To make the second image plane always available in the inspector, click this pin icon. We will need this for other nodes later. Double click on the header to open the settings for easy pick whipping. Select the fourth nodes. Change the rotation to 180. Similarly pick whip to link the Z pivot parameter. Repeat the step for image plane 5 and image plane 6. 240 degrees for plane 5. Link Z pivot. Three hundred degrees for plane six. Also link the Z pivot. Great, we have positioned the images along the sides of the carousel. 
As previously mentioned, we can change the size by adjusting the Z pivot value of the second plane node. Decrease the pivot to create a closed style, or increase it to achieve an open style. To rotate the carousel, select the Merge 3D node. Go to the Transform tab of the Merge node. We can use the controls in this tab to transform the entire 3D scene. Changing the Y rotation to rotate the scene. Here we also need to link the Z pivot, so the rotation is in sync with the carousel. Now, as we change the rotation Y value, we get a nice carousel rotation effect. To animate the rotation, we will create keyframes. Go to the beginning of the clip. Mark a keyframe for the Y rotation parameter. Change the value to 0. Go to the end. Change the value to 360. A new keyframe is created automatically. Play the clip. This looks good. But if you want to rotate one image at a time, to create a slideshow, you will need more keyframes. For example, rotate each image in 10 frames and pause for 20 frames. Move to frame 10. Ensure the Merge 3D node is selected. Change the Y rotation to 60 to create a new keyframe. Go to frame 30 and also set the rotation to 60, so that between frame 10 and 30, the carousel stays still. Continue to move forward by 10 frames, change the value to 120 to show the image 3. Move forward by another 20 frames, set rotation to 120. Repeat the steps for the rest of the images. All right. We now have a carousel slideshow. If you want to smooth the rotation, you can open the spline editor. Select the Y rotation parameter. Click the button to fit the curve. Drag and select all the curves. Press Shift S or click this icon to smooth all keyframes. Now the rotation is much smoother, and the animation looks pretty cool. But if you want the image to perfectly stay still, you can select the two keyframes, press Shift L, or click this linear icon to straight the curve. Repeat this for all the keyframe pairs. OK, this is how we create a carousel effect in the Fusion page. It's not difficult, but it can be time-consuming especially when adjusting keyframes and timing. So I made an effect template called Essential 3D Carousel. You can download the template through the link in the description below. Simply double-click the DRFX file to complete the installation, and you should be able to find the carousel effect in the effects panel. Here we have 10 images stacked in the timeline. To apply the carousel effect, Select all of them and create a new fusion clip. Apply the effect. And instantly we create a closed style six side carousel slideshow. Please note that this template can be resource intensive, particularly on 4K timelines. If you're experiencing lag during playback, Consider enabling the render cache to ensure smooth playback. Right-click on the clip and enable the Fusion Effect render cache. Once the cache is done, the animation is smooth and looks good. The effect is set to 6 sides by default. The maximum number of sides is limited to 12, while the minimum is 3. 
Depending on your use case, you can set this value accordingly. In this demo, we have 10 clips in the Fusion clip, so we change the sides to 10. Increase the width to eliminate overlaps and ensure all the images fit properly. You can either choose to close the carousel or make it an open style. The animation time is set to 30 frames by default, which means it takes one second to rotate from one image to another. With the pause set to 30 frames, in this case, it can only transition to the third image because the clip is only 5 seconds long. We can decrease the animation and pause time to rotate through all images. For example, change the animation time to 5 frames and pause for 10 frames. But this is too fast. Instead of speeding up the animation, we will need to extend the clip for a smooth slideshow. But we can't extend the duration of the Fusion clip, as it's made of other clips, leaving no room for extension. To resolve this issue, open the Fusion clip in a timeline. Select all clips and extend them to more than 20 seconds, considering that the animation setup requires 2 seconds for each clip. Now go back to the previous timeline and extend the Fusion clip. Play the clip and wait for the render cache to complete. OK, now it's good. You can also set the pause duration to zero for continuous carousel rotation effect. Ensure to uncheck the Ease Animation option for seamless rotation. Otherwise, you may get something like this, as this option is meant to smooth the rotation between images. To reverse the rotation, check the Reverse Animation option. The next two sets of the parameters are used to adjust the carousel view. The first set translates the carousel as if in a 3D environment. Use the X setting to move the carousel left and right. The Y setting to move it up and down. And adjust the Z value to zoom in or out. The camera focal length and position parameters also affect the view. Like in the real world, you can zoom in and zoom out, or move the camera around the subject. For example, lowering the focal length creates a wider angle view, allowing us to move the camera closer while still capturing the scene with different perspectives. Or we can move up and down the camera to create a tilted view. By combining the carousel position settings with the camera position adjustments, you can make the carousel view according to your preference. All right, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and find the template useful. Please feel free to leave your comments and suggestions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.